Hey everybody, what's happening? John Ram, Dean and Robin Black with you chatting about UFC 206, which went down Saturday night at the Air Canada Centre. We saw Max Holloway become the interim featherweight champion, taking out Anthony Showtime Pettis, who took out Donald Cerrone in the past throughout his career. And we saw Cerrone in the co-featured bout taking it to Mac, um, Matt Brown and holy smokes, what a head kick knockout. But what I, I'm interested to know, going in from round two, to round three, we saw the smile. We saw Cerrone waving to Matt Brown. Did that throw Matt Brown off? Do you believe at all? I don't know, man. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think you can throw Matt Brown off, but I think it gave Cowboy what he wanted, which was, hey, let's let's make this fun, and that's what he's been doing. Uh, as he walked by after, he pointed at me. He said, you shouldn't have picked against me. And I was scared because that's Cowboy Cerrone. <laughs> uh, uh, it's also a compliment because he said he watches all of our stuff. Awesome. And whenever we find out that these fighters are, are and the coaches and stuff are consuming that that is a huge compliment. But I did, I picked against him with, against Pat, and then I picked against him. I didn't. I figured he was going to win the cowboy fight at 170. Yep. Cowboy versus cowboy gun fight. Yeah. Story. And then uh, I picked against him again in story. I said I would never do it. And then I did it. And then after that, I said I will never, ever underestimate Cowboy Cerrone again. It, he's one of our favorites. And I did again. I don't know what I was thinking. I'm sorry, Mr. Cerrone. That was a beautiful fight. I talked to your coach, Greg, after. And uh, he really gave me some extra insight. He sees you as a true genius of combat when you are relaxed and free in there. And you are that, sir. It, it, is, it is incredible to watch you fight. And, uh, and Greg also pointed out how Cowboy gets better as he gets in there. The more information, you know, when somebody predicts, you see these weathermen, obviously they don't know what they're talking about two weeks out. Oh, it's gonna probably rain next <laughs> week, <laughs> Friday. And they're wrong, but then they get four days out and they get a little more accurate. It's gonna be warm and then they get two days out. And by 12 hours, they can predict with almost certainty. That's what Cowboy's doing. As, as he gathers more information and gets deeper and deeper into the fight and closer and closer to the storm, he's able to really, he has so much information, he just gets better and better and better. And that was, that was a really fantastic fight. Uh, Matt Brown is a tough dude, and they put on, on any other night, that we'd be talking about that yeah, as the greatest yeah. fight we've ever it's seen. Uh, but uh, Cub is his friend too, and that, I think, jazzed him up. When you uh, talk about Cerrone and the way he manages things inside of the cage, I think a lot of people, that's what they're talking about when they say that Donald Cerrone is a slow starter. Mm -hmm. He's a slow starter because he is taking in all that from information. Yes. Why rush things? Everybody knows it's 15 full minutes, which can be a long time for a lot of people, or 25 minutes. Is it important that Donald Cerrone stay true to what's been working for him? Yes, for sure. And so what happened? What were we looking at? As the fight went further and Donald got more and more comfortable, it, it familiar, oh yeah, I do this. I'm Donald Cerrone, motherfuckers, I do this. And every time he gets deeper into it, it's just, man, there's nobody in the world better than me at doing this. So what was happening? He, the, the few fights he lost were in that first minute. So we just have to, had to address that. They had to address it psychologically. They had to address it climatizing him to how quickly that stuff happens, how intense it is in that minute, that it can sometimes overwhelm you or shut you down, or your brain sort of, you know, uh, it, it turns its back on you. Uh, so we needed to get him through that. Once you get him through that minute now, and he doesn't have to do it by starting faster, he doesn't have to do it by changing anything. He just has to do it by being familiar that don't worry, man, it could be tough right now, but it's gonna get easier. Cause you're Donald Cerrone. As the fight goes on, it will always get easier for you. What's interesting is we talk about fighters and their fight IQ, and you mentioned Greg Jackson and his affinity for uh, Donald Cerrone and his mental uh, game. Isn't it important? We've heard fighters talk about it's important to not think out, out there, to just go and be free and let things kind of play out the way that's going to play out. That's what that's what they've got him. That's the stage they've got him to, and that's what Greg reminds him and and the direction he points him in. You're a genius. You're a genius. Geniuses don't have to think when they play play piano. Geniuses don't have to think when they paint. Geniuses don't have to think because if you're busy going back into your mind and, and looking at things and trying to put them together, you're getting kicked in the head. You just have to go out there and do. And that's where he gets to. And that happens more and more as the fight goes on. We're, so we're learning so much more so quickly about how this how these athletes are working, how these coaches are working, that we've never been at a stage where we're able to see so much uh, and it is happening quickly because now your opponents understand that about you. So they're, you know, Greg is a smart man. He studies military engagement. He studies game theory. He studies yep. gestalt psychology, all of those things. 
He has to do that because all of this information now is being shared and observed and analyzed and discussed. So you have to be that much further ahead. And you know, I'm really pleased the audience gets it. That that Toronto, that ACC in Toronto, awesome. man, they get it. People understand fighting more than they've ever understood fighting, and we're just scratching the surface. This is the best sport in the world. This is the best art in the world. If you're Donald Cerrone, uh, I had a chance to talk to him, and he's talking about a title shot now. He's like, you know what? I never really gave it any thought in the past, but why not? Uh, I'm, I'm the winner of a number of fights at 170, yeah. 170 pounds. I'm one of the biggest stars in the game. Let's just make that the focus. Is the focus to look at who's at the top? of the heap right now. We know it's Tyron Woodley, but who are you looking at if you're Greg Jackson or are they even concerned with that? Do they just look at Donald Cerrone and how, the, how to get the best version of him? The Max Holloway approach is going to be used by a lot of people. I know uh, Dwayne and TJ Dillashaw are taking this philosophy as well. It's like we can't control what a company who decides on who gets a belt uh, or a chance at a belt based on how much, how many audience buys something because of how much Twitter does. And you can't control all that crap. What you can control is it knock fools out. Just one after the other. That's what Max did. Max was like, you know, oh, there's all this Connor talk and there's all this, and I'm, I'd like to get in there and I'm gonna say things, but if that doesn't work, I'll knock the next guy out. I'll knock the next guy out. TJ and Dwayne were frustrated that they didn't get Dom. Give me the next guy. I'll knock the next guy out. That's what. That's the. That's the way. That's the way right now. And that's the way Donald is on right now too. Donald is on that way. And look what it's done. Yeah. I mean, who who's more likely to get a chance? Because again. Fans, audience, pay-per-view numbers, big star, all that. Well, Donald has made himself into that, so he's probably going to get his wish. What's unfortunate, uh, Matt Brown, another loss, only one win in his past five or six fights. Uh, clearly, the UFC is not going to cut a no guy. No way. Like, there's no way they can cut a guy like him. But how do you how do you move forward when you when you look at the way things have played out for you? It's like oh, the goal is to be a champion. Most of these fighters talk about being a champion, but can you still have a championship mentality and can you still strive for greatness when you only have one fight one win in your past five or six i think so because yeah. three fights from now which could be eight months from now everyone will have forgotten about that you're what you're trying to do is is get grow to the, be the best the best you that's possible on the way up that it'd be nice to keep winning as well but sometimes on your way up, you win, you lose, you lose, and you keep getting better even though you're not winning. And that's what Matt Brown is doing. And that's as, as awful as it feels for him to lose. He's, if he looks at that and sees that and sees that as the truth, he's getting better. He had brilliant moments in that fight yeah. against the guy who right now at 170 is better than anybody. Matt Brown is getting better all the time, and that's what he needs to focus on. Matt Brown, Donald Cowboy Cerrone, thanks so much for all the action at UFC 206 in Toronto.